Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of the Dad on the Mic Show. I'm your host, BK Mullen. How's it going? How you doing? Uh, the world is covered in snow yet again. Well, not the world. My world, my hometown, currently. I thought we were done. I thought we just got all the snow at once with that ridiculous blizzard. And then that was going to be it. I thought, that, okay, we're good. All good now. Don't need any more. And it just finally, almost all of it, finally melted uh, about two days ago. All that was left were a couple of little piles of snow, a little bit of covering still on the backyard. But no. You thought it was gone, but now it's back. But that's all right. Uh, let's see. The Super Bowl just happened. A lot of things, uh, a lot of things being critiqued. But, you know, you know how it goes. Especially in the world of social media and everything takes everything, or everybody takes everything seriously and, you know, all that jazz. But we won't talk about that now. What I would like to talk about now, as I reach for my phone, is actually something that my, uh, my wonderful wife saw online today. Uh, it was a, uh, sponsored, uh, sponsored post on Facebook from The Natural Sleep Company. Save 35% and get free shipping, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Best-selling sleep system, yada, yada. Sleep system for kids. Quick dissolve, sleep melts. It is a all-natural, uh, apparently hormone-based, sleeping pills. For children. Let me say that again in case you didn't, uh, <clears throat> in case that didn't come through quite right. Sleeping pills for children. Now, now maybe it's because, maybe it's because I grew up in the 90s where, and, and you know, this may extend beyond the 90s, but, but I, I specifically remember quite a significant epidemic, uh, lots of people getting addicted to sleeping pills, dependent on sleeping pills, uh, obviously they were made out of harder stuff back then, and I'm sure, uh, I'm sure these particular ones that, that we saw an ad for today, um, are not as strong as potent or made of the same stuff as adult sleeping pills. But let, 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 let me let me make something clear. Yes, a regular sleep schedule is important for your kids. And sometimes while traveling, let's say on an airplane, uh, your kid's inability to sleep and energetic nature may be a drag. However, the notion that you would give a small child essentially a sedative, while it's a hilarious joke that I have seen many hilarious YouTube videos about, and uh, memes and such. They're hilarious. The jokes about giving your kids sedatives. Y you know why they're hilarious? You know why? Because nobody would actually do it. That's why. Or at least that's what I thought, anyway. I always thought, yeah, that's, a that's hilarious. Giving your kids sleeping pills because... Yeah, I, I get it. It's funny because kids, <clears throat> kids never sleep, and they're slightly annoying, and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. It's funny because because people don't actually do it. 
Or at least people with any sense don't actually do it. Have have you tried this stuff, or have you considered trying this stuff? And why? I'm sure there are also, um, uh, let's say, maybe some medical conditions out there uh, that affect young kids, and, and I feel terrible about that, that, you know, such medical conditions exist whereby your children are unable to uh, sleep or get a deep sleep or rest properly, um, then maybe consider it, sure. But if you're just an everyday parent, how in the world can you get so frustrated with the process of getting your child to sleep? where you would fall back on such things. Again, maybe there's medical conditions. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe your kid is sick briefly for a brief period of time, but until such time as they get better, they're going to have trouble sleeping. Maybe they need help. Can Consult a doctor, for sure. But, uh... Am I am I the only one bothered by that? Tweet tweet me. Let, let's all right, and and Facebook and email uh, dead on the mic at yahoo.com. Talk to me about this stuff, and I would love to talk to if you're listening the people who created this stuff, because that's just I, I I'm I'm blown away. I'm blown away today. I really am. Sleeping pills for your kids. I don't know. That's just, I just I can't I can't fathom that. I can't I can't wrap my head around that. Somebody help. <laughs> Hashtag send help. <laughs> that's that's all I can say about that right now. Uh, speaking of kids sleeping uh, stuff, this is uh, part two of the new bed for uh, for Emma. It's been a couple of days now. Uh, the mattress is currently on the floor for a couple of reasons. I mean, one, of course, uh, if you remember from the previous episode, we could not get the, uh, we couldn't get the box spring up the steps, unfortunately, but we were thinking about skipping on it anyway before we even bought the thing because, you know, she's still little, she's two. It's kind of a big bed for a two-year-old, for a mattress to be then on top of a box spring and then up on a frame. It's a little big, uh, so, you know, there's a fall hazard without getting any of the uh, the bumpers and stuff like that. So, she's perfectly fine with it. Uh, the only thing is, is that she, uh, it, uh, it's very distracting for her. Like there's a lot, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in her room. There's her humongous stuffed dog. There's the rocking chair which she loves. Uh, there's a lot going on, so we have to stay with her and fake sleep, or in some cases actually fall asleep next to her, uh, so that then she will be comfortable enough to uh, to fall asleep on her own, and then we can, you know, retreat to our own bed. Or what are we? Ha whatever we have to do. Um, the only real difficulty we've had so far, and again, it's just been two days, three days. Um, the only real difficulty we've had so far is with naps in the middle of the day, because it does, especially when she's at a particular energy level, uh, when it comes nap time. She does have trouble falling asleep more. So, you kind of have to stick with it for longer. And because we have to, uh, well, because I have to stick with it for longer, she ends up not falling asleep until kind of later, later in the day than we would prefer she have her nap. And then she wakes up later, and then it takes a, lo a while for her to, you know go to bed later in the evening, just kind of one thing kind of falls into the next thing, and but we'll get better at it. First things first is we have to start waking up a little earlier in the morning, 
Um, which she does not mind. Because, you know, she's a two-year-old. Um, no sense of time yet. That we can tell, anyway. So, <laughs> so that's nice. She's not going to be like, yo, Dad, it's, uh, it's 6.30 in the morning here, pal. Why are you waking me up? I don't get it. Uh, not gonna get any of that for a while, which is nice. But, uh, but yeah, gonna start waking up earlier, uh, even earlier than we, than we started because I've been trying to, uh, adjust the schedule a little bit better anyway. But yeah, there it is. She is on a, uh, full-size mattress with, uh, her brand new, uh, frozen bed set, which is nice. It's very, very nice. Much thanks to her grandparents for that one. So I'll keep you updated on that. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it rolls on, so to speak. We'll see how it goes. Ho hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, she'll get more used to it. Uh, we're also doing the potty training thing, so we got that going on as well. Um, you know, good stuff. Just just moving right along with the whole uh with the whole teaching this little girl to be a human thing. She's getting a lot uh <laughs> she's getting a lot more talkative. Like a lot more than she was before. She's learning a lot of new words. It's now easier for her to uh for her to remember things, especially in context, which is nice. Uh, but I'm at a little bit of a, uh, I'm at a little bit of a situation within my own, within my own brain space. And, uh, and the wife is as well. You know, we as parents are trying to do the best that we can for our little girl, of course. But we have always been adamantly against her spending too much time with electronics, uh, especially with, uh, she doesn't get to touch the iPad, that's rule number one, but we do have, um, uh, her grandparents on, uh, on my wife's side have a little, uh, Samsung, uh, uh, pad thing, whatever you want to call it, uh, s tablet, sorry, tablet. And she likes to spend time with that. She likes to watch stuff. She watches stuff on YouTube, watches stuff on Netflix. Uh, it's all kid-proofed, mainly, although my number one complaint about YouTube is that there are some things that are categorized as for kids, which really should not be categorized for kids. Let me tell you. Anyway, um, so she likes to play with that, and, and we'll let her spend some time with it, but of course... Dinner time comes first. You have to eat, uh, you know, and interact with us at some point. Besides the fact that the battery goes dead after a while because she uses it, you know, uh, for as many things, different apps as possible. Um, but recently, we got a Kindle Fire. Now, it's not 100% kid-proof, but it is the one meant to be kid-proof. It came with the kid-proof case and all that stuff. And, uh, and we monitor it as best as we can. She logs on to Netflix. Uh, she watches kid stuff on YouTube. You know, pretty, pretty much the same deal as, uh, as the other one, as the Samsung. But, um... We feel like... She's starting to spend a little bit too much time on it than we would prefer. Uh, the part that we're arguing within ourselves about, though, is that all of the kids' things that she watches on Netflix, on YouTube, there's a Barney app, that sort of thing. Uh, all of the things that she watches are educational things. She's learning to identify colors. She's learning the alphabet. She's learning certain words. Uh, there's even a show that she likes to put on, which is on Netflix, and I highly recommend for any parents with any kid of any age. Uh, it's a show called Signing Time, 
which teaches you basic sign language, which is really awesome. I, I am happy to say that the three of us can now do uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in sign language, which is awesome. We actually learned that from Barney, not this particular show, but anyway. Uh, it's called Signing Time. It's really, really cool. It's really, really great for uh, for kids to uh, to start picking up on sign language. Uh, I, I regret that I have not learned it yet, but in watching this show with Emma, uh, we can learn now that we're adults and we can learn to, you know, help her learn it and she can help us to learn it. You know, it's pretty great. But yeah, so that's, that's the main conflict. She is learning things from these videos. Some of the videos, not so much. There's one where, for some reason, and it's got millions and millions of views, and somebody please explain this to me. Uh, there's this one little series that has millions of views for some reason, where they take a baby doll, and they put it in a little baby doll bathtub, and they cover it in, like, Skittles, or gumballs, or, just, like, hard candies, like that. Now, I understand with your baby doll, you don't want to use water because there's gaps in there and it can fill with water and then get moldy and that sort of thing. But it's it, millions, millions and millions of views. I'm pretty sure the one is up to one billion at this point. It's a little nuts. Uh, obviously, that one is just for more for fun, uh, although they do point out colors every once in a while. Uh, so, yeah, are you a parent with a, I don't want to say technology addicted toddler, uh, how, do, how do I want to put this? Do you have a toddler who uses technology to a certain extent like that uh, in educational ways? And how does that make you feel? Obviously, we occasionally appreciate the silence. Every once in a while, we'll let her have it for a purpose. Like, for instance, uh, if I'm just cooking, if, if it's just me and I'm trying to get dinner ready before uh, Carissa gets home, this has only happened like twice. I'm trying to get dinner ready before Carissa gets home. I got a lot of prep I got to do. Didn't have time to do it earlier. Emma's kind of, you know... It's her, it's her post-nap, uh, hey, why did you wake me up, asshole. Uh, <laughs> she, she gets grumpy sometimes <laughs> when you wake her up from her nap. Uh, so sometimes it's handy. I'll hand it to her. She'll watch her videos on, uh, on YouTube or Netflix, and she'll just camp out on the couch for a while. I keep an ear and an eye on her. I'm able to do that from our kitchen, which is nice. Uh, <laughs> but still, the debate rages on within ourselves and between each other and between us and her, especially. <laughs> so, so what is your experience with it? Do you have experience with it? Uh, hit me up. You know where to find me. Dad on the mic on all things. Uh, and let me know. Let, let me know where, where have you been? Or are you expecting to uh, are you are you expecting to face this problem soon? And what do you expect? What are your plans for handling this with your little one? That's always an interesting thought. I'm about to have a kid. Uh, let's say my wife and I we use technology a lot. So how's that going to affect the kid? That sort of thing. Because parents think about that kind of thing. It happens. So this episode is brought to you by our very own Auto Dad show coming to YouTube very, very soon. Uh, we were just at the Philadelphia Auto Show. We took some awesome pictures, some awesome video. Uh, we filmed a little tidbit for Kia, who is one of our sponsors. Uh, much thanks to... Dr <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> Excuse me. Much thanks to Drive Shop for, uh, for hooking us up with that. It was awesome. Uh, but yeah, Autodad, find it soon. You can go follow us on Twitter right now and Instagram right now. 
They are car reviews for parents. We're reviewing cars from a parent's perspective and all sorts of cars. New, used, uh, four-door, two-door, vans, uh, you know, minivans, trucks, the whole deal. We're going through the, the whole kit and caboodle, if you will. So check it out, Autodad Car Reviews for Parents, coming soon to YouTube. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys join us for that. This show is also brought to you by Poplife. Poplife.com, awesome apparel for parents. Need I say more? Awesome t-shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts. Go check them out now at thepoplife.com. So this past Christmas, we got a lot of uh, handy art things for Emma that we are uh, taking advantage of. So, so much. We we just love doing art artsy stuff throughout the day. Mostly it's coloring, uh, coloring books and stuff like that. But uh, she got a ton of the Crayola Magic Ink stuff. You know, the, um, the No Mess Magic Ink stuff, which is pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, definitely enjoying it so far. I swear these things never dry out because she has left them, you know, on the couch with the, with a cap off for a few hours type deal. Um, but there's one that we haven't tried yet because although it's the no mess, you know, won't stain anything, uh, easily washable type thing. Uh, it's actually a finger painting set. We haven't tried that yet, so maybe we'll try it. I might put down like a a piece of plastic or something anyway, just in case. I don't know. I just don't know. I haven't used this stuff before, aside from in marker form. It just makes me nervous. Coming from a childhood where I played with the traditional stuff, which makes a mess on everything and stuff that didn't make a mess was usually in some aspects uh, corrosive if you will to certain services <clears throat> not that I uh, not that I purposefully experimented with such things <clears throat> at all anyway so we're gonna give it a shot soon soon I'm not hundred percent sure when but soon, soon, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, uh, a bit of a house update, uh, some pretty cool stuff. Uh, the basement is coming together. It's a little, it's a little trashed right now. Uh, I had to go through a couple of boxes to look for some stuff, uh, the other day. So it's a little messy in here, plus there's a, a bunch of her toys that she doesn't use anymore, the larger ones that she's now too big for, sitting in the corner over there. i got to find a good place to put that stuff. Uh, might be donated. We'll see. We'll see. Might hang on to it, uh, just in case we have another little one. But, exciting news. We got a lovely box from our power company, our electric company. Uh, it was free of uh, energy saver light bulbs. And we had just enough to do the places where we have the lights on the most, which are the kitchen, the living room, and the basement. Now we had three from a previous box that we were using uh, for the apartment. But now we've got the energy saver bulbs, let's see, one, two, three, four in the basement. Uh, so three, four, maybe five on the ground level. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty nice to know that we're doing everything that we can. Like this is a, this is as good as it gets. We're good at uh, we're pretty good at keeping lights off when we're not using them or don't need them. Uh, and now on top of that. We've got these uh we got these lovely energy saver bulbs. And the nice thing too 
is that is that part of this pack of uh, this pack of bulbs? One of the things that my wife doesn't like about the the newer energy saver ones, and I don't, I don't like them to a certain extent, but uh, one of the things that she doesn't like is how bright they are. They are considerably more bright than the traditional soft white light bulbs uh, that we were using before. But aha! In the box also came a pack of energy saver bulbs that have a soft white casing over top of them. So you're still saving on energy, but it's not going to blind you if you just so happen to look directly into it, which is really nice. It's really nice. It's especially nice for the steps uh, and also in the kitchen over top of our dining room table. Uh, it's nice to not be blinded while we're trying to sit there and eat. That is nice. So, uh, I, I believe a lot of power companies across the United States are offering this thing. So ask. Call your electric company and ask. Hey, are you offering such and such? I would love to have one. Because they really are useful. Especially if you're, uh, you know, paying the electric bill on a house and you have kids that are uh, a bit older than my own who like to keep lights on whenever and it's uh... you know what it's one of those things it's one of those things that now i'm an adult and i realize the money that i <laughs> that i previously cost my parents <clears throat> by having the lights on and and my stereo on and the tv on all at once and all that good stuff. Yeah. Sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, don't forget to listen to past episodes. You can subscribe on iTunes. Uh, if you would like to support our show, we're going to be up on uh, Patreon soon, which would be really, really neat. Uh, going to have some special stuff for people who subscribe through there and uh, for people who help us out. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be sweet. I'll let you know as soon as that's up. Uh, maybe as early as tomorrow. So keep an eye on the Dad on the Mic Facebook page uh, as well as our Twitter and Instagram. I will let you know. Uh, and you let me know what you think of this sleeping pill nonsense. Uh, as well as uh, any issues that you've had with your little one and sleeping, that sort of thing. Let me know. You know where to find me, at Dad on the Mic on the tweets and the Instagrams, facebook.com slash Dad on the Mic. Everybody have a good day. Peace.